Well, here's to me. Three months I've now been living in this white metal box and uh, I survived. Welcome to van life. Now, I woke up this morning and I looked out of my window. Turns out I'm not the only one with the white metal box idea. Have a look. There's so many people, so many stories. And the only thing I can say really, this is YouTube, so it's all about me. So here's my story. Here's my life. So for my three-month anniversary, I thought I'd return to the place where actually my fate was decided. Here in Genova, 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 what's it called? Genova, Girona, Girona, Girona. I'm in Girona. This is where it all started because my diesel heater, if you've been following me, my diesel heater broke down here and it was just before Christmas. It was freezing cold. And, and that's when I decided I wouldn't stop until I saw some winter sun. And that uh, was Valencia for me. And if you've been following my channel, then you know I got stuck in Valencia. Not for a bad reason, really. Not that there was anything wrong with Valencia. I actually really loved the place. And I, I would even consider moving there. Although the summers are a bit too hot, I think. Um, but in trying to sort out the diesel heater, I came across other problems, which meant that the alternator needed to be changed. And then they couldn't change it, or they did change it. And it turned out that I have a mechanical failure very long story. I don't want to bore you with this one more time. So basically what I've decided is to return back home where I can speak my language to mechanics instead of uh, translating everything through Google Translate in Spain. So, um, so I decided to uh, make my way back home. But like I said, three months, three months is a long time. And three months also gives me the time to reflect on what van life means to me. Like I said, as you look around here, there are lots of people here living a kind of van life and each has their own story. And my question to myself really is like, what kind of a van lifer am I? I'm not really sure if I know who I am. Well, I know who I am, but you know, what kind of person I am. A very wise friend of mine once told me, like, well, wherever you go, remember, you take yourself with you. And I've discovered that that actually is pretty much true. I mean, I can pretend that I'm that guy that jumps on a kid's swing, you know, the moment nobody's looking and, you know, shrieking like a little girl. I can pretend that I'm that kind of guy. can also pretend that I'm the kind of guy that, you know, jumps on a bike and enjoys nature, you know, when the trees are in full bloom. I can pretend I am that guy. I can also pretend that I'm the guy that, you know, the minute he sees the sea, whether it's cold, hot or whatever, he puts on his speedos and jumps right in there because, hey, that's the kind of guy I am. Or... I can pretend that I'm the kind of guy who just enjoys a free coffee at Ikea because I have a Ikea family card and the coffee's free. I'm all of these people. And on the other hand, I'm none of these people. So I'm just trying to lead a day-to-day -day life. And in a van, you know, every day is different. Every location is different. So. I was in Valencia, as you know, and I'm now trying to whisk my way back home in 300 kilometer increments. 
you know, so I won't overstretch the alternator and I can get back home safely. So I've started my, my journey in El Saler. And if you didn't uh, see my l last video, um, I will have a little recap here because at the end of the video, and not everybody um, got to the end, I was watching this beautiful sunset in, uh, in, in South Valencia. And then this little puppy wa walked up to me and uh, I thought that was a cute moment. So, you know, that's one of these things that happens when you're out and about living this life, you know, although I'm sure you, you get to meet puppies everywhere. But that was a cute moment. I thought like, I'll share that again with you. Now, after, uh, <laughs> That beautiful sunset on an also very very busy campsite that's always the problem now the weather is starting to pick up we are in march now and vans are appearing everywhere so where in december and january when i made a little weekend away to el Salaire, i was there basically on my own you know a couple of other people were there now in march as you can see it's getting busier and busier and you're not alone anymore. So I, I need to learn to live with that. I am kind of a bit of a loner. And although the, you know, van life community is fun and all that, I don't like it. I don't like it. Too many people. I don't like it. Too many noises as well, which I'm very uncomfortable with. Anyway, so backtrack. So. I was in El Saler and then I thought like what would be my next move? My next move was Tarragona. Now why Tarragona? Um, well, last year on a trip I was stuck in Tarragona for some bizarre reason and um, I went to this one place and they served American pancakes with bacon and maple syrup and they were so lovely because they didn't really speak English that much. I mean, one of the guys spoke English, so they freaked out when I started asking questions about the menu. <clears throat> anyway, um, they were so lovely to me that I thought like, you know, that's a reason to go back to Tarragona. Last time I didn't even visit the town at all. So um, this time I thought, you know what, I'll have a walkthrough. I'm gonna spend a couple of nights there just to, and it was a parking lot, as you can see. No, apart from the lovely pancakes, which they served me, and I recognize some of the guys over there as well. I don't know if they recognize me because it's been a year, but um, they were uh, very pleasant as usual. So I really enjoyed my, my, my meal there, but I also enjoyed town. And this time I made the effort of going round and, um, you know, the usual churches, another Roman theater. What is up with these Roman theaters in Spain? think of Spain maybe we always think of those uh, bullfights and um, but also this tradition of building these human pyramids and Tarragona is famous for that and there's a beautiful statue sort of um, um, marking that event so I had a lovely time trying to answer the question again what kind of van lifer are you I am actually the van lifer who tries to avoid other van lifers if that makes any sense. So in Tarragona, I really liked my little park up there. It was just a parking place where locals parked their um, cars when they went to work or when they went to the skating park next door. And I was just there on my own. I think it was the only foreign number plate. No, it wasn't gorgeous and it wasn't um, great to look at, but it was really quiet at night, very peaceful so I could sleep. The motorway was just around the corner, but still that noise is kind of a white noise. It's kind of a soothing noise for me, rather than being on a busy parking lot where I am now, where there's dogs barking, there's people, uh, you know, slamming their doors uh, at some bizarre time at night. 
Um, there's people leaving at weird times. There's people arriving at weird times. That annoys me more than just standing on a parking lot in a town next to a couple of cars from the locals. So after Tarragona, it was up to the next stop, about 300 kilometers onwards towards Barcelona. Now I know already the traffic in Barcelona is murder, so I decided to um, make a stop in Sidges because I was there last year as well. And uh, my usual park up there as well. And now, as you can see, not glamorous at all. It wasn't busy, which was a good thing. And it wasn't too far away from the city centre. Actually, that's the kind of park-ups that I like, basically. Just normal park-ups, ugly little places, but just a bike ride or even just a walk away from um, from the city centre. Sidgets, again, it's a lovely small village at the seaside. And again, last year I didn't really spend much time there and didn't notice all the lovely things that, it, that Sitges had to offer. So, so this year I, I lingered on a bit and I walked through those little tiny streets and to be quite honest, really loved it. And, and it'll be on my list of places to visit next year because let's be honest, I'm gonna do this again. <music> After Sitges, which is in the south of Barcelona, I moved to the north of Barcelona just for one night. This is where reality stri strikes, basically. I had a lovely lunch at Ikea. There you go. It doesn't have to be a home-cooked meal, because I can't cook, to be, on be honest. But I went to Ikea, had a lovely meal, had a lovely time. Um, there was also a gym in uh, Badalona. It is called Badalona, not Barcelona, but Badalona, which is to the north of Barcelona. I went to the gym there, had a shower, did the whole thing, charged my charged all my phones and my batteries, you know, did all that, and then moved on to to my stop here, where I am today, Girona. And as I mentioned before, this is where my trip truly started, in Girona. Now, because it started within winter, I didn't give Girona a chance at all. I just stopped here, decided, too cold, diesel heater, not working, I'm out of here. So, Yesterday and today, I spent some more time in Girona, and again, what a great place this is. Once the sun is out, as you can see, everything looks gorgeous, apart from the park. Um, a friend of mine also pointed out that if you're a Game of Thrones fan, which I'm not, but don't tell anyone, but if you're a Games of Thrones fan, then you will recognize a lot of locations because they used Girona for a, mo a lot of the locations. So I went out there with my camera and um, I shot most of the locations that I could find online. So if you're a Game of Thrones fan, a GOT fan, is that what you're called? If you are one, try and recognize the locations that they used and the ones that I filmed. I wonder if you could uh, point out a couple of scenes that uh, your favorite um, your favorite TV program used as location.
So, it's been a busy week, and it's time now to finally leave Spain. Tomorrow I should be in France, and I'm looking forward to that because I don't speak a word of Spanish, even though I did try my best. Well, not saying a word, but you know. But I do speak French. Petit peu, but a petit peu is is going to get me a long way. So I'm looking forward to crossing the border tomorrow. And um, how shall I put that? The reason... Okay. Next week, you will find out why I have to make an extra stop in France because of the van. But I'll tell you about that next week. But it's a good story, I hope. Anyway, again, thanks for listening. Thanks for celebrating my three-month anniversary as a van lifer. Still not sure what that is. Now, does it mean because I'm contemplating going back home that, you know, I lose the title of van lifer? That's another one. Hmm.